Pelvic girdle is of great functional significance and there are some movements that also occur at the level of the pelvic girdle and that is because of the joints such as the nutation and counter-nutation which is because of sacroiliac joint. Another very important aspect about the sacroiliac joint is that it serves as a route through which, you, uh, which there is a transmission of force from the trunk to the lower extremities and from the lower extremities to the trunk. And that brings us to this topic in which we're going to talk about the structure of this important sacroiliac joint, the ligaments of this joint which provide static stability to it, as well as the movements or the motion that occur at this joint which are the nutation and the counter-nutation. So let's start off with this what is the sacroiliac joint. So it is actually the joint formed between the sacrum and the two innominate bones portion of ilium. So between sacrum and ilium as I already mentioned and it is a synovial joint however it is a non-axial joint thus it is also known as a plane joint. But that plane joint does not mean that actually the surfaces are irregular it means that it is actually non-axial. The articular surfaces are actually pretty irregular and that is actually of great functional significance because that makes the two surfaces very actually stable because there is very less movement to it. it is important as well because it transmits weight from the upper body through the vertebral column to the hip bones and vice versa through the hip bones to the vertebral column and to the upper body and that is one of the very important functions of the sacroiliac joint. Moving on, the sacroiliac joint is not designed for movement however there is a little bit of movement in terms of nutation and counter nutation but it is designed for great stability and it has very little mobility. The articular surface is lined with hyaline cartilage and because it's a synovial joint and there is some degree of movement and synovial membrane lines the non-articular portions of the joint. It also has a fibrous capsule reinforced by ligaments which are of great functional significance because it is a very stable structure because of the great amount of the static stability provided by numerous ligaments of the sacroiliac joint. So there is the anterior aspect and the posterior aspect. So we're going to take a look at some of the ligaments. So talking about the anterior aspect, we have the iliolumbar and the lumbosacral ligaments but we're actually going to consider them at the, uh, in the lumbosacral joint. Other than that, we have the anterior sacroiliac ligament, the greater uh, and the sacrospinous ligament which is located posteriorly and the sacrotuberous ligament you can see here as well. Once again uh, the, uh, the posterior aspect we have the posterior sacroiliac ligament just like the anterior sacroiliac ligament on the ventral or the anterior aspect but the posterior sacroiliac ligament has two parts the short and long posterior sacroiliac ligaments. Now let's take a look at one of uh, these ligaments in detail which is the anterior sacroiliac ligament and then we will move on to the next. So anterior sacroiliac ligament as the name suggests it is located anteriorly or ventrally to the joint and it is broad flat ligament on the anterior pelvic surface. It connects the ala and the pelvic surface of the sacrum to the auricular surface of the ilium which actually articulates with the sacrum and it holds the anterior portion of the joint together as the location and the name suggests. The second very important ligament is the intraosseous sacroiliac ligament which can be seen here in a transverse section and it is the deepest, shortest and strongest of the sacroiliac ligament and thus is of very great functional significance. And it fills the roughened area immediately above and behind the auricular surfaces and the anterior sacroiliac ligament. <clears throat> and it connects the tuberosities of the ilium to the sacrum. Moving on, we have the posterior sacroiliac ligament and as already mentioned, it has two components, the short posterior sacroiliac ligament and the long post, uh, posterior sacroiliac ligament. So starting off with the short posterior sacroiliac ligament, it runs more oblique, which means at an angle between the ilium and the upper portion of the sacrum on the dorsal surface or the posterior surface. So it runs at an angle and it prevents forward movement of the sacrum. However, the long posterior sacroiliac ligament, as we can see in this picture here, runs, runs more vertically between the posterior superior iliac spine and lower portion of the sacrum. And once again, the function is also different because it prevents downward movement of the sacrum, whereas the short posterior sacroiliac ligament prevents the uh, forward movement of the sacrum. Now, <clears throat> we have two ligaments on the posterior aspect which are very 
near to each other. One is the sacrotuberous and one is the sacrospinous. So sacrotuberous ligament, located on the posterior aspect, is very strong and is once again a triangle-shaped ligament. And it runs between posterior superior iliac spine and posterior inferior iliac spine of the ilium. And from there, posterior and lateral side of sacrum to the inferior to the auricular surface and from the coccyx. Its fibers come together to attach on the ischial tuberosity, which is actually the side on which we sit in a normal position or an ideal posture. And it serves an attachment for one of the very important muscles, which is the gluteus maximus, which is responsible for extension at the hip joint. And the function is that it pre prevents forward rotation of the sacrum at the sacroiliac joint. The other ligament is the sacrospinous ligament. It is once again triangular shaped and lies deep to the sacrotuberous ligament and it has a broad attachment from lower lateral sacrum and coccyx on the posterior side. As we can see in the picture here, we have the sacrotuberous ligament and we have this here, the sacrospinous ligament. And from its broad attachment, it then narrows to attach to the spine of the ischium. And with sacrotuberous uh, ligament, it converts the greater sciatic foramen into the uh, sciatic notch or the greater sciatic notch through which passes the sciatic nerve along with the piriformis. As we can see here, this is the piriformis muscle, this is the sciatic nerve, and this is the sacrospinous ligament. And this converts the sciatic notch into sciatic uh, foramen, and it is actually a potential site of entrapment for the sciatic nerve under the piriformis, which is known as the piriformis syndrome and can give symptoms of uh, which are similar to as in the sciatica or the uh, lumbar radiculopathy. Talking about the movements possible at the sacroiliac joint or the uh, motions that are possible at the sacroiliac joint, we have the nutation and the counter nutation. So, nutation is also known as the sacral flexion. And when I say sacral flexion or nutation, it means that the base of the sacrum, which is actually the superior aspect of the first sacral vertebra, so the base of the sacrum moves anteriorly and inferiorly like this. Whereas the inferior portion of the sacrum and coccyx move posteriorly. So this is the superior portion and this is the inferior portion and the movement happens like this. So this is known as nutation. Now, <clears throat> during nutation, the pelvic outlet becomes larger and it occurs with trunk flexion or hip extension. On the other hand, we have counter nutation and in, it is also known as sacral extension. And in this, the base of sacrum moves posteriorly and superiorly, whereas it causes the coccyx to move anteriorly. The pelvic inlet becomes larger and it is accompanied with the trunk extension or hip flexion. Now, the significance of sacroiliac joint motion during childbirth is that at early stages, the baby moves through pelvic inlet. So we need a wider pelvic inlet. And in the later stages, there is the, the baby passes through the pelvic outlet. So we need a wider pelvic outlet. And as we already discussed, that the pelvic outlet is increased with nutation. So in the later stages of labor or the childbirth, there is nutation. Whereas we already discussed that the pelvic inlet increases during counter nutation. So at the early stages of the labor or the childbirth, there is actually, uh, you can say, uh, counter nutation. So that was all about the sacroiliac joint, its structure, its function, its significance in childbirth and the ligamentous support and the static stability for this joint. And I hope you learned something new out of it. And thank you very much for uh, watching Skylia.com and for more lectures like this, keep on watching. Thank you very much.